welcome back to Sakura Succubus. Now, where we left off, we met this girl on the train on our way to work, and uh, she knows Marina, and now we're in our job right now, about to face our boss after breaking almost a thousand dollars worth of equipment. Here goes nothing. But to my relief, thought not, though not necessarily, <laughs> surprise. Ogazawara, what have you got to say for yourself, hmm? Oh, uh, my boss has not turned into a cute girl after all. I think it's safe to say we don't want to have that type of fantasy. Why the fuck you lying? He looks just as ill-tempered as always, if not more. <laughs> I think it's safe to say, yeah. Um, I've only just arrived in the office. I've yet to set down my bag and sit on my desk, and he's already giving me an earful. He's grinned into the office the moment he heard me open the door. He must have been waiting for me to make my grand entrance like a fan eagerly awaiting the beginning of an AUAU concert. But unlike AU's loyal contingent of fans, my boss isn't holding a glow stick or wearing a shirt with my face on it. If he was, I'd be pretty freaked out, not gonna lie. Instead, he's holding a cup of coffee in one hand, a scowl upon his face. Yeah, yeah, it would be that way. Judging by his expression, by the way he's shaking, he'll spill that coffee if he's not careful. He prepares himself for the mother of all rants. I am so busted. Well, don't just stand there, go oh, you groomless crystal. What the fuck is that? Okay, crystal? I don't know. Um, you know what you've done. Where is my apology? Oh, uh, I, I, I'm sorry, boss. Sorry won't cut it and you know that. Then why did you ask me to apologize in the first place? Exactly. That's what I like to say. But I know, given the circumstances, I better not infuriate him further. <sighs> My boss has never hit anybody before, though secretly, I think he quite liked to. <laughs> but the seeming cup of coffee in his hands is quite concerning. Sorry, I'm trying to put this in. There you go. It would be very, very easy for him to accidentally slip in his rage and pour it all down my front. I asked you to get some photos of AU for the upcoming news piece and you've buggered it all up. Where are my photos, huh? I, um, I'm sorry. There were a few technical difficulties. The trains were delayed and the, that's no excuse, of course. <laughs> as a photographer, no, as an employee, it's your duty to see to it that you accomplish all of your jobs, regardless of the external circumstances. Yeah, pretty much. So the train was delayed, so what? You should have used your head. Why didn't you hire a taxi? It was too late for that. The train broke down. I got on it in time, but but nothing. The boss slams his cup down on my desk. A few brown droplets of scalding drink fly over the rim of the cup and splatter on a stack of documents. I guess I'm gonna have to clean that up later. That is, if this desk is still mine by the end of the morning. The more my boss rants and raves, the more unlikely that's beginning to look. 
a few more work colleagues has been alerted by that noise because they're peeking at us curiously. One of my workmates give me the sympathetic smile while another looks coldly amused by my plight. I guess it's all right for them, lucky soul and so. I've had it up to here with you, Agasarawa. I have no need for an employee who can't do his job. You are a failure, and to cap it all off, you broke an expensive piece of company equipment. I was oh, hoping, oh, damn, and I was damn. hoping he mentioned the damn equip. Okay. Ah, I stared at my boss. He could have deducted my failure taking to take any pics of AU, giving my failures to upload them to the cloud over the weekend. But how does he know about the camera? Well, as I mentioned, Marina did tell him. I haven't told him about that yet. I was saving a bit of the news to last. I thought it'd be, be a nice way to cap off this awful morning. The cherry on top of the shit Sunday, if you please. Somebody must have told him about the camera already. But who? Was it Marina? Did she really call my boss up and beg for his pardon? So I commend her efforts, but my boss does not, doesn't look at all moved by her pleas. I don't think it was going to be happening anyway. Trust me. His face is getting redder by the second. I'm afraid he's going to explode like an overinflating weather balloon. When I heard that, I was about to hit the roof. How could you be so careless? That camera is worth more than your life. Our deadlines all been pushed back because of your carelessness. How do you feel about that, huh? I, uh, I look at my feet. My voice dropping to a whisper. Ah, uh, I am very sorry, sir. What did you say? My boss leaned in, cupping his ear with his hand. Speak up, boy, I can't hear you. I said, um, even more of my colleagues are watching me now. They're not even trying to hide their amusement. I bet they're all laughing at my expense. People can be so cruel. I know, right? I'm I'm very sorry, sir. Really, I am. I know my behavior was inexcusable. Indeed, it was. Not only did you make a harsh of a simple job, but you also destroyed a piece of a company equipment. I should have you fired at the very least. But I'm a lenient man. Yes, boss, you're right. I'll have my desk cleared out right away and... Wait, what? You heard what I said. My boss folded his arms, his expression sulkens. You've worked at the company for three years. During this time, you've been a model employee. It's rare that I caused to get on your case, unlike various other people in this room. The boss shoots a point glance at a few of my other core workers who are still listening to my supposed dress down. Listen, yeah, pretty much. And now that I've realized most of the drama has passed, they seem to have lost interest. A couple of them blush, suitably cha chastised <laughs> as they return to work, while a few others pout and click their tongue. Did they want me to be out of a job? This office is full of vultures. Yeah, I was about to say, like, these guys are rude, man. If you're that much of a model and they are that jealous of that role, it's to the point where you're just not even in their radar anymore, it just goes to show you that they just don't have any respect for you in the work office. They just don't. In general, I have no complaints with you. Last Saturday was an unfortunate blimp, shall we say. In other words, in you otherwise, 
in your otherwise spotless performance. <sighs> if you were a newbie, I'd be inclined to fire you over this, but I don't want to cast one of my valued employees out in the cold over a couple of mishaps. Then does that mean? Yes, indeed. I'm giving you another chance, Osagawa. But you're on thin ice. Don't betray my trust again or you'll be sorry. I don't like being made of a fool of. I'm going to work with you to the bone. Be prepared to put in the hours to make up for your atrocious blunder. Do you hear me? Oh, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Bow deeply, deeply to my boss. Cringing at my own... Sir... <sighs> sir Celius. <laughs> Uh, all the while. Only a few seconds ago, I was insulting this guy in my head and calling him an asshole. I'm so two-faced. Maybe my boss isn't quite as horrid as I thought, but he's still a businessman at the end of the day, and I doubt he, make, he made this call if he didn't have interior motives. Now I'm curious. What's going to happen to the camera? Won't the cost of replacing would be taken on my own wages? Ah, about the camera. It's a funny story, that. Um, the boss ma massages his quiver chin in thought. That would be a standard company policy, yes, but you can rejoice, Azagawa. You must have a guardian angel. An angel, sir? Indeed. She called the office this morning uh, when I got to work and she explained the whole story. The whole sorry affair to me. At first, I was indigenous. I thought it was some kind of prank, but she was very persuasive. Still, my boss shake my head, bemused. I can't believe that you know Wakasuki Morina. For such a plain, unassuming man, you've got a surprising amount of connections. Ah, so Marina did call my boss. It wasn't just talk. Oh, why do I feel like this is going to be the one thing that's going to save this man's job? <laughs> I don't know Marina that well, but she's already done a lot for me. I have to wonder what she sees in me and how I'm going to repair. How do you get into her good graces, hmm? Two of you are childhood friends? Oh no, I've only known her for a day. Really? Well, snorts. Well, you must have made the quite impression. She offered to pay the equipment you're damaged in full. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. Cause the second I was thinking about it when I was in the second episode. I remember, I mentioned, I mentioned directly that Maybe she's going to pay for the equipment because there's no way in hell that he's going to say that that's a standard standard policy for us to pay for it. And I knew he wasn't going to make that consequence on us, so Marina was going to pay for us. That's when I realized I should have I should have realized she was going to do that, man. I should have realized it. I called it. I fucking called it. She wired the money over the company bank account uh, shortly after our phone call. She told me that she's familiar with IQAU. She offered to set up a private meeting between you and her. Oh no. And you can take photographs of her uninterrupted. What do you think about that? Ah, once more, words family. Oh, well done. Once more, words fail me. <laughs> Just then. <laughs> I stare at my boss in silence Slack jacket surprise, unable to articulate more than a handful of broken syllables. You, I mean, um, I clear my throat and then try again. Is the date of this meeting fixed? Yes, indeed. Miss Wakazuki put me through to Miss Aku's agency and they were only too happy to oblige. Uh, you'll be seeing Miss Aku this week alone in her private beach in Okinawa, excuse me, <laughs> can't speak. Um, 
will fly you out there, of course. Miss Wakazuki is very... Miss Wakazuki barely... English, motherfucker! Do you speak it? Yes. Miss Wakazuki very kindly offered to foot the bill. I'll mail the full details over to you later. That's about the gist of things. You have been given an amazing opportunity, so don't screw this up. You have a chance to take as many photos as Miss Q as you want. And while you're at it, you might as well interview her. This could be your big break. Give it your all. I won't accept anything less than 110%. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. I bow and scream to my boss anew, amazed by the wealth of possibilities that have landed on my lap. I'm going to see you again this weekend on the private beach to Okinawa, no less. As a mere member of Ho Hoi I'm I, again, I am butchering almost half of these, so please understand why I just don't say nothing. Um, I've never been to a private beach before. I'm starting to feel like a celeb myself. Marina really has come through for me. Not only did she pay for the camera I smashed, but she managed to fix up a meeting between AU and I. My boss was right for once. Marina really is like a guardian angel. She's a dark skinned, barely haired angel. And I owe her, if not my life, then my job. My immediate future has been secured but I can't afford to get complacent. There's still my meeting with AU to contend with. If I'm going to impress both Marina and my boss, I need to do my best. Now I've been saddled with all these responsibilities. I don't want to let anybody down. Oh boy. The rest of the day goes by in a blur still reeling after my conversation with my boss and nothing feels quite real. Thanks to my failure on Saturday, I have to scramble to put together a new article in Liu and one of the one about AU that'll be suspended until next week. I end up working overtime in this dark when I finally leave the office. Gee, my boss is such a slave driver. You think he'd be a bit more considerate given my connections with Novo Rishi. I've barely <laughs> had a chance to sit down all day. Yawning, I check my phone. It's a little after 2100. Ugh. I should have been at home hours ago. Oh well, I might be tired now, but my job's secure and I have my weekend retreat in Okinawa to look forward to. With a bit of luck, things will work out all right. And I'll get a BB of photos that'll please my boss. That should put me in, the good, in his good books. Maybe he'll even let me go home on time for a change. That would be a treat. For the present, however, I'm absolutely gagging for a drink that might help soothe my nerves. With this thought in mind, I board a train with a few stops, then I head to the same bar where I first met Marina. <sighs> well, it's true. I want something to drink. Part of me is hoping I'll run into Benefitress once more. Unfortunately for me, luck was luck is on my side. What? Oh, sweet Marina. How oh, it's good to see you, Missy. How have you been? Marina is sitting at the bar, one tone lived across to the other, just like it was during our first encounter. Her fair hair falls over her shoulders and she nurses a glass in one hand. 
When she sees me, she smiles and wa she waves me over. Why, hello, handsome. Fancy seeing you here. It's a small world. It's just a coincidence. I felt like dropping by on the way, way home from work. Really? Marina inclines in her head. A knowing smile plays about her lips. That's funny. I am under the impression that your workplace was a good half hour away on the other side of Sam Ooh, Samita River. Surely there are bars closer that you could frequent if alcohol is all you want. I, uh, I had business to attend to on this, this side of the city, that's all. Don't read too much into it. If you say so, dear. Marina laughs curiously. I can tell by her tone that she doesn't believe a word I'm saying. Not that I, that's very surprising. <laughs> I can't believe a word I'm saying either. I'm such a terrible liar. <laughs> oh, I can actually relate to this man. <laughs> Why can't I tell M Marina what I'm looking for? I appreciate everything she's did for me and I want to thank her. Truly, I do. She really did save my neck. But admitting that out loud, particularly in a crowded bar like this, would be embarrassing. God, I'm so stubborn. I went out of my way to find her, and now I'm clamming up. I'm acting just like a little kid. Maybe Marina can read my thoughts. It hasn't been the first time I've pondered this. But, ugh, sorry, because she rests a hand against my own and says softly, It's all right, Haruki. You don't need to tell me why you came here. I can tell. Am I that easy to read? Yes, indeed. Most men are. Don't take it too personally. I mean, <laughs> what a surprise. Marina titters. You don't need to thank me for helping you. Which is just as well giving the words thank you has yet to cross my lips. Maybe I need to lube my throat with alcohol first. I'd help you if I want to. You're a very interesting man and I'm awfully fond of you. Talking to your boss was easy enough. He was full of bluster, but it's all an act. His, uh, come on, obstreperousness melts away with a few choice of words from yours truly. You did more than whisper, sweet. Nothing was in the, his ear. He told me you gifted a sizable chunk of money to a company and you set up private meeting between myself and you. Well, what can I say? Marina shrugs. I have wealth and connections. It would be a shame not to use them. Man, rich people are something else entirely. With enough cash, you can open up almost any door. I'm kind of jealous, to be honest. But more than that, I'm incredibly I can understand using your wealth and connections for your own sake, but why bother wasting them on a loser like me? I'm a nobody. Now, now. I have less of a self defend Less of that self-defeating nonsense. Marina squeezed my hand with her own. You might consider yourself a nobody, but I find you quite intriguing. I like to dot upon you if I can, but don't worry, you're a pretty little head. You say that, but I still have no idea why you want to dot on me. <laughs> I've done nothing to deserve it, and we're virtual strangers. Why, you say? It's simple. It's because you're cute. Huh? 
for a genius businesswoman, her reasoning's surprisingly simple. Is she going to elaborate my supposed cuteness? I'm very curious to see how a member of the opposite sex regards me. It might be a good learning experience. Your reactions are utterly charming and you're so sincere. Hmm. I couldn't help but be enticed by you the moment our eyes met. You're like a special pastry in the window of a high-end bakery. Being with you, like this is making me sell it. Look at this girl salivating in this bitch. Ain't this something? This is crazy. <laughs> and if I can use my influence to help you, I won't hesitate. It's a small price to pay to see you smile there. Now, won't you stop grossing and let me pamper you? Yes, mommy. <laughs> and to flatly without humor, which makes Marina laugh. God damn it, I didn't mean to. See, this is my problem, because I don't know. This, this dude has no idea what the fuck he's doing. It's almost like he's clearly possessed. Which, to be quite fair, with a body like this in the eyes of almost a diamond, how could you not? How could you not? My guy, how could you not? Seriously, how could you not? I suppose I am mothering you in a sense. Though I don't know if I like being called that. Mm. If you want to show me a suitable measure of respect, you can call me madam or no. That sounds too formal. What about mistress? Mistress? Yes, indeed. I quite like taking charge. Bad touch! Bad touch! Stranger danger! If you want to show how graceful you are for my help, I'd prefer it if you did it physically. I trust you with no up. No objections? I stared into Marina's eyes. They're green. Just like the jade's earrings suspended from the near formable earlobes. And the turquoise vest which stretches across her chest. Marina's so attractive, I feel lightheaded. <laughs> I think any guy would feel lightheaded at that point, my guy. I have no idea how I got so lucky. But I'd be fooled if I refute her advances. I've already started to get inside. Alright then. We can go back to your office if that's what you want. I guess I wouldn't mind either. I know I could be awkward. I'm not used to people doing favors for me. My parents were pretty strict. Were pretty strict. So I've gotten used to working things out on my own. I'm still not used to relying on others. So I find it hard to accept people's help. I'm bad at thinking, at thinking people too. It's hard to find the right words. But I really do appreciate what you've done, Marina. I think you're wonderful. <laughs> well, isn't that sweet? Marina laughs, her voice sultry, and then pushes her burst against my arm. Thank you for trusting me for a bit of your backstory, Hiroki. I promise I'll take good care of you. You're special, like nobody else. And I want to make you feel... <sighs> Fuck! Okay, okay, okay. Come on, come on, come on. You, you got this, you got this. You got this, you got this, you got this. Ooh. Now that was quite the workout. I feel invigorated. <laughs> well, what can I say? I'm the master at work and I got the stamina to prove it. <laughs> Don't you think my skin looks a little too prettier? My cheeks are positively glowing. Love really is a miracle drug. I feel much stronger now. <laughs> ha. Ha. Marina might be in a good mood, but I feel downright exhausted. 
Okay, maybe I, I over-exaggerated that last one. Never mind. I'm slept on the floor of our office, boneless, as I was on Saturday night. More like a Sunday morning, wearing nothing but my underwear. My head rests on Marina's lap, my eyes focus vaguely upon her pretty face. <sighs> She'd had the property to put her business clothes back on after our tryst. <sighs> I can't see much of her skin, but that hardly matters. I've already seen almost all of her there is to see. Are you all right, dear? Marina runs her fingers through my hair, a constant smile playing about her lips. You are breathing quite heavily. I, how if, at least. I sure hope so. I had the fun of you, and I would be devastated if you died so quickly. I haven't had my full of fun just yet. Then again, I suppose I should prepare you for the worst. You humans are awfully fragile. I'm surprised you were able to keep the pace with me for two whole nights, if you can say that. My fullness of Marina's dies, coupled with her sing-song voice, is lulling me to sleep. But <sighs> something about her words strike me as rather strange. I blinked up at her, curious, my brow fjord. What do you mean, you humans? What? Oh my. Marina blinks innocently. <laughs> did I really say that? Why the fuck you lied? Yes, you did. It was clear as day. You said, you humans are awfully fragile. Now that I think about it, Hasn't Marina said other things to that effect? Back then, I shrugged it off to the words as, an as the amusing of an eccentric millionaire, but now I'm starting to get suspicious. In fact, everything has happened for these last few days have been downright fishy. Bumping into IQU was surprising enough, but what about Marina? What about the girl on the train? And speaking of the girl on the train, Marina wasn't joking, you smelling so good. My memory's a little haze, but I'm sure she said that. She mentioned Marina's name. Who was she and why did she know Marina? Something's definitely going on, and I've become the unassuring epicenter of the whole bunch of strange encounters. Now, I want to get to the bottom of this. If anyone knows what's up here, it, it'll it be Marina. I just want to know. What's happening to me? Oh dear. Marina Tuts. You must have had too much to drink. Nothing's happened to you other than the healthy amount of excitement. I've been having fun, it's true. But things just aren't adding I'm a normal guy, but my life has been distinctly abnormal since a used concert. I maneuver myself off Marina's lap with no small amount of effort and then shoot her a quizzical look. You're not the only attractive woman who's shown an interest in me. And you seem happy enough to cling on me before she got mad and called me a pervert. Then, on the train to work this morning, this weird girl started flirting with me. If you can call what she did flirting, strange girl. Did she have short blue hair? Yes, that's right. And was she wearing a ve very tight pair of shorts? Yes, they were so shamelessly short. By the way, Hmm, by the sounds of it, it seems like you had the pleasure of running into Cosmos. Cosmos? Is that the name of the girl on the train? I believe so, yes. Performing 
Indecent actions on a busy train doesn't seem like the sort of thoughtless thing she'll do. She has no common sense. None of this makes any sense. Before last Saturday, I seemed to repel women. My life has done a total 180, and I have no idea what's going on. I'm all too much to be a coincidence. <laughs> You're working yourself out quite a, a lather, dear. Don't let it get to you too much. I'm trying not to, but it's a lot to take in. You don't know what's happening, do you, Marina? I might have an idea, yes. Marina toys with a lock of her silvery hair. A small smile plays about her lips. At first, I tend to keep quiet about all this. But I'm awfully fond of you, and I hate to see you squirm so. You've been a very, very good boy, so I can let you on a little secret. Make sure you keep this to yourself, though. It's highly classified information that could shake the core of society as you humans know it. Marina leans in, her lips inches away from my ear as she whispers, The truth is, I'm a succubus. Wanna run that by me again? Motherfucker. She's the succubus? You gotta be kidding me! I was trying to figure out if a, a you was the fucking succubus. She is? Good fucking lord. <laughs> it makes me wonder how the hell she acts so fluently around me. And it, 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 it made so much sense. Why the hell she act like this? It was in the fucking title. Why didn't I not expect at least... I expected at least one of them. Don't get me wrong. I expected at least one of them to be the succubus. But her? No. Not even close. Are you kidding me? What the fuck? That's crazy to me. God damn. No fucking way. A succubus? I stare at Marina. Utterly dumbstruck. Of all things that she could have said, I didn't think for a second she'd say something like that. This isn't a joke, is it? You're really not a succubus, are you? Oh my, are you saying you don't believe me? That makes me very sad, Rookie. Marina sniffs at the heartbroken, but then turns her head away. I believe I've made a fond feeling for you more than that. Ever over the last few days, I would never ever lie to you, particularly not over my own nature. This is a closely guarded secret, you know. I don't tell humans my true identity willy nilly. You're the first to hear the truth. You can act a bit more grateful. Yes, mistress. I'm sorry, mistress. I bowed ahead of this. I didn't, I don't want to upset her, but I can't shake the initial doubt that this is nothing more than a prank. I mean, a succubus? Really? I I'm sorry, but when you say you're a succubus, doesn't that mean you're a monster that takes advantage of men? I am no monster. Marina pouts cutely. Oh. <laughs> her arms folded across her chest. Do I look monstrous to you? Would any wicked beast have a body as gorgeous as mine? I mean, when you think about it that way, uh, no, yeah, I guess not, you would, you don't look much like a monster, but you don't really look like a succubus either. Not that I know what a succubus is supposed to look like, they're not exactly commonplace like cats and dogs. I'm not sure what to think about this. It's quite overwhelming, to be honest. Hmm, I suppose that's fair enough. Humans are supposed to know, know about our kind, after all. This must come as quite the shock to you. You should have known. I should have known you wouldn't believe me that easily. You're not an insidious child. Uh, humans are in the 21st century live in an era of logic and reason. That being the case, it's not my job to show my proof. 
it's my job to show proof of my claims, then you won't be able to deny what I really am. I would never normally show my real form to anybody, but you're special. I like you a lot, Haruki. And that's why I'm giving you a little treat. And what treat is that? Marina. Marina clicks her fingers in her vintage solutions. Oh, 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 my God, it got so hot. No, 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 no. Oh, my goodness. The truth keeps getting hotter and hotter in this bitch. Holy fuck! Holy shit. It's gotten hotter, man. It's gotten hotter. Holy shit. Whew. Horn spouted from... Marina's scalp and bat-like wings unfurl from her back. Her clothes, too, have undergone quite the transformation before. Marina was clad in her business attire. Now she is wearing something more risque. Red rope winds about her body and black leather is vacuum sealed about her arms and legs. She looks incredibly unbelievably hot and that heightens further by the tail that that <laughs> which protrudes between her chest see i kind of i was wondering if that was her tail you see shoes me a sultry look her eyes have lit it i'm not a normal human i really am a succubus and it's not just me a you and cosmos are succubus Succubi too, and there are numerous other attractive succubus women all across the world. What? I don't. I try to say something semi-sensible, but words fail me. The twist has completely blindsided me, robbing me of my speech faculties. My brain started to overheat, much like the overused photocopier at work. This is really incredible you said the and you say you say the world is full of succubus like you yes indeed we live amongst humans since the dawn of time many of society's most famous revered women have been succubi like cleopatra for instance Hold up. so in this universe Cleopatra was a succubus? I didn't think that in a million years. <laughs> it's a wonder how few people know about it, really. Marina's fingers sink into the full moan of her chest. She manipulates her breasts above her I'm going to have to censor that. Why the fuck you lie? All the while, I can't deny that Marina's a succubus in her own girl. Not now that not now, I can see her wings, her horns, and her tail. That have been buried my head in the sand. I can't argue against my own eyes, and I do have a few questions I'd like to ask. It might sound gauche, but I'm burning with curiosity here. I thought succubus were meant to intimate with humans to stay alive. Is that true? We succubus don't need such things to sustain ourselves, but we do need to be revered. Uh, that's why so many of us were in position of power, be in the business, politics, or the entertainment industry. Oh, that makes a lot more sense, actually. <laughs> we need to be loved and adored. If we're not, we lose all our magic powers, we'll lose our good looks, we'll start to age like humans do, then we'll wither it away. We still give us work long and hard to keep you humans in their trail. That's why I've sacrificed so much for my business. That's why you push yourself to be Japanese number one idol, and it's why Cosmos. Well, I can't pretend I understand her particular line of work. God damn! Look at this attire right here. Look at this. God damn! I cannot believe what I'm witnessing. Good. Fucking lord. In any event, we succubi have much more than lazy moochers. We're hardworking 
active members of society. We do our best to demand respect, and the more our fame grows, the stronger our powers get. That being said, we do have a lot of stamina. We're, we're well versed in giving humans pleasure, but there are certain humans who attract our attention more than others. Some humans have a unique sense, sweet sense, like ripe and juicy flavor. These humans call to us, which we succubi find humans who resonate with us. We do all we can to make them ours. You are one such human, Hiroki. You call yourself average and ordinary, but you smell, your smell is incredibly addictive. Yeah, that's, that's surprising to me. In all my years of living on Earth, I've never met a human more delicious than you. I knew the moment I met you, I wanted to make you mine. But I wasn't the only one. After talking with AU, it seems your scent had quite the influence upon her too. Just one whiff of you made her lose her self-control. She was this close. And making you her own. Oh, so that explains why she was acting like that. Oh. God, <laughs> not, I, I'm gonna keep it 100 with y'all. It's getting hot down there, it really is. And I'm not saying anything else other than that. <laughs> this remark seems like a little inadequate in the face of this information overload. What else am I supposed to say? I have no idea how I'm meant to react. In less than five minutes, I learned that succubi exists and that I possess some sort of smell that marks me out as being particularly tasty. That explains why all these attractive women are falling over themselves to be with me. It all seems a bit too convenient. If I'm really that attractive, then why didn't any succubi try to po position me before? Maybe they did, but you didn't realize they were. You have been in relationships before, haven't you? I guess so, yeah. I'm no alpha male, but I've been in relationships in the past. It's not crazy enough to keep count, but I've slept with at least a half dozen girls. And it never occurred to you that almost half of them are succubus, my nigga? The idiocy in this man. The idiocy in this man. I'm unfucking believable. My longest relationship was in university. That lasted for a couple more months. My girlfriend was all over me. To an extent, it was kind of scary. She used to break into my room at night to watch me sleep, and then sometimes try she tried to grab me in the middle of lectures. In the end, I broke it off with her. Her enthusiasm was flattering at first, but after a while, it gotten a bit too much. Was she a succubus too? I wouldn't be surprised if you attracted several succubi in your time. In fact, I'd be, I'd be more surprised if you hadn't. You were incredibly cute, Rookie. I've only known you for a few days and I'm incredibly fond of you. I want to make you mine. But therein lies a problem. My sisters must have heard me talk about you with a you. They're awfully gossips, really. Whenever I find a handsome boy to play with, they'll try to steal him away from me. It's like a sort of a game. Seems like Cosmos has already found you and I doubt she'll be the last. My sisters will start coming after you, desperate to claim your heart. I hope that you have enough stamina to handle all of us. As a succubus, I don't mind sharing my conquest. Wanna run that by me again? So much is happening in the space of one video. <laughs> so much is happening. happening what is happening what is happening what is happening i'm literally I, i'm speechless what is happening right now like so now we have no choice but to have sex with these girls unfucking believable <laughs> oh my goodness but feeding off your advances of numerous succubi might just be enough to break you you have an unusual amount of stamina 
But you're still human at the end of the day, and you're far more fragile than you look. If my sisters get too rowdy, I'll try to discipline them. I don't want them to break you completely, but you'll need to toughen up too. Please don't let me down, my dear Hiroki. I've extended a lot of time and money on you already, and it'll be a shame if you fall apart too quickly. <laughs> well, I'm gonna have to end it here. There was so much that happened, guys. I'm not gonna lie to you. There was so much. So I'm gonna have to end it here. Thank you guys so much for tuning in for this video. If you do, make sure to leave a like with the axe of truth. Also, hit that subscribe button if you are new to the channel. It's been Zed, guys. Later.